Hey everyone and welcome back to another Battle for Azeroth alpha video. Feels pretty damn good to say that. So, Blizzard have uploaded the initial build of BFA onto their servers. While it's not yet playable, we can data mine the build and get an early look at the content. So today we are going to take a look at the new mounts that are going to be available in this expansion. And uh, yeah, if you're into dinosaurs, this is a pretty damn good one. And also a massive thanks to Mr. GM. He helped us pretty much get set up with being able to do some of the data mining ourselves. Okay, let's kick it off with the Brontosaurus. Yeah, we're going to get to ride a Brontosaurus, uh, the one from like the Battle for Azeroth trailer. This pretty much looks like the largest in-game mount yet. I mean, if you just pay attention to the small details like the pots and the jars, it's clear that this thing is really massive. And what's even more interesting is that it looks like the actual creature version of this is way larger. Of course, the Zandalari color palette's there. It's really rich and vibrant too. It's like the opposite of a desaturated look, which is great. And uh, it's also just nice to see mounts which have a fresh rig and new animations. Next we've got a bee mount. Now the idea of a giant bee is probably a little bit spooky but as it turns out if it's fluffy enough yes people will indeed think it's cute. Uh, still though it is nice to see more of like the modern era of WoW's art style be applied to another type of creature especially with how they like texture fur. I really love how that looks and um, the bee comes in a few different colors as well. No word on how we get it but you know what I think it looks pretty great. Next, we've got the horses. A little bit of a return to normality, but this is the latest take on the World of Warcraft horse. The first thing that I notice is the texture resolution. We know the Battle for Azeroth has a slight boost to the game's minimum required specs. I've got to wonder if that gives them more headroom with like the level of detail, but just some of these new models look so crisp. Now, there seems to be loads of variations of the horses, different saddles, different styles, all the usual, and at least some of them do represent the Kul'tyr and houses. Plus, there is also, well, these are also the base for Anduin's new horse horse and it looks absolutely amazing. Next up we've got the flying head mech. So yep this is some gnomish engineering it, it would seem and it kind of looks like an updated version of the decently iconic Mimiron's head from Ulduar all the way back in Wrath of the Lich King. Now part of me wonders if this is tied to engineering. They haven't really done like um, goblin and gnomish engineering in a while and it would be kind of interesting if they did. Now I mentioned goblin engineering so it's time to talk about the hovercraft. Yep a new goblin themed mount. See, I used to love the engineering mounts back in the day and it kind of dawned on me we haven't really had one since the Sky Golem. I'm kind of hoping that there'll be something going on with engineering here, but regardless, this is a really, really nice looking flying mount, uh, but I do like how it looks great on the ground. It doesn't have flapping wings or anything like that, and it's got the two big, like, hover pads, so it will actually look reasonable sort of sailing over the desert. Next, we have the Blood Troll Bat Mount. So this model that you're seeing is not the actual mount, but basically the collection strings point towards there being a Blood Troll Bat Mount. Now, there is a Toad Mount that uses the Toad Loa model, so it's seems like this model is pretty much what you're going to get. Now, being a blood troll related thing, it of course is looking pretty damn gnarly and evil. Now, of course, the frog low amount, I did mention that. I'm not sure what the full name is, but it pretty much looks like what would happen if you turn Frank Reynolds into a frog and made him a mount. Uh, so its name is Loa Mount currently, and it seems to be associated, of course, with the Zantillary. Again, you know, I love how it's just this big stylized thing with rich colors. It really stands out. It feels unique. It's just, you know, it's not another dragon or another wolf. Um, I wish that you could be a Gallywick style goblin and ride around one of these things. It would look kind of ridiculous. Next, the Vicious Basilisks. So Blizzard, once again, are continuing the tradition of giving us new Vicious mounts. Um, they pretty much, uh, you know, they've worked through all of the, like, the racial mounts, like the wolves and the horses. So in Legion, we saw them do turtles, bears, and foxes. The list of animals is kind of getting shorter and shorter, which probably means we'll be getting more like creative or out there looking vicious PvP mounts in the future. So good to see the Basilisks be here. Now we also have the Gladiator's Proto Drake. So yeah, the next bunch of Gladiator mounts, they're Proto Drakes. I'm not really sure why there's a Northrend connection here, but I mean, yeah, they look pretty great. But let's not dwell on them for too long though, because there's a lot of other really fresh stuff here such as the hyena. So the hyena models are a hell of a jump up over the old hyena models. They really nail that kind of savage look that comes with the territory, but of course it's still that nice sort of cartoony blizzard style. Um, once again though, I imagine that surrounding your saddle with a bunch of spikes is a terrible idea, but hey, it's World of Warcraft. Okay, the Trilobite Mount is a strange one. So it comes from the deserts of Vol'dun, and uh, it's something we got a brief glimpse of in the Battle for Azeroth gameplay trailer. The actual mount looks pretty damn badass. I can imagine you sort of skittering around the place in a bit of a creepy way with this guy. Vol'dun itself is a troll zone. 
Um, we don't, I suppose, know if it'll be available to both factions, but I imagine it would be. And also, if you were to get some, like, Heart of Fear, Karaji, or maybe Voldoon armor and transmog that up, and then ride this guy around, I think it would be a pretty metal-looking setup. And speaking of metal, we've got the Blood Tick. So, um, as much as the prospect of riding around in a Blood Tick doesn't sound that appealing, the mount itself is pretty darn cool. It comes from the blood troll part of Zandalar, we think, or at least stylistically it does. So just a, shot, a short hop over from Voldoon, which is where we found those trilobites scattering around the place. Now, BFA's first raid, Uldir, is centered around the blood trolls and their blood god. So it seems likely that at least one of the blood troll style mounts in this video will come from maybe the raid or an associated dungeon. But let's move far away from that with the giant parrot. Turns out we're going to have big parrots in Battle for Azeroth. This is pretty damn great. Uh, I'm kind of sad we didn't get a Skyhorn Eagle in Legion, but you know what? This is close enough. So with, um, you know, there being places like Freehold as well, we can probably get a big old pirate transmog to, you know, fly around in this guy with. And um, being a flying mount, of course, it's in an odd position. In Legion, there were some flying mounts like the Storm Dragons, but they were only added to the game for players by the time the flight achievement was implemented. So maybe we'll see this guy in like patch 8.2 or something like that. Hopefully we'll be able to get it early enough though. Next, the Tarodax. So it's another Tarodax mount. You have seen these before from the content of patch 5.2. Of course, that patch involved us invading an island and fighting through the Zandalari trolls. So it makes sense that we get sort of some updated versions of stuff we saw all the way back then. Of course, it's always lovely to see WoW's cartoony take on dinosaurs. Though at some point, I would love to see them try like a proper proto feathered up raptor. I think that would look pretty damn cool. Next, we've got the Blood Troll Beast. Yeah, not really sure what this is called, but in the game files, it's called the Blood Troll Beast. I kind of love the more creepy looking models in the game, stuff like this, stuff like the Shackled Urzel. They're really cool even if they're not sort of the thing I want to be riding around on all the time. Now, the Blood Trolls, of course, are related to the Zandalari storyline, but since players will be doing dungeons, raids, and world quests across both of the new continents, I'd be very surprised if this, or indeed most of the Cult Harass stuff, um, you know, if they were, like, faction-specific completely. Um, though that said, a orc riding around on a Cult Tyrion horse, that might be a little bit bizarre. Next up, we've got the hive mind. Uh, this one's really strange. So first, it's a multi-person flying mount, we think. Uh, now, Wowhead have been using what looks like Yogg-Saron's brain to represent this mount. I haven't been able to find anything in our own data mining, so I'm not really sure what's up with it, but it's speculated, and this is the interesting bit, to be a secret mount. So perhaps a little bit like the Lucid Nightmare or something like that. Next, the Zandalari Direhorn. So it's the final one we'll cover today. This is the racial mount of the Zandalari Troll allied race that's going to be coming with the launch of Battle for Azeroth. It's nice enough, though many of us already have a mount that looks extremely similar from patch 5.2. So overall, that's pretty much a look at the mounts that we have currently. I really like how there's a focus on weird designs. Um, I think it continues on with the Legion's tradition of giving us stuff that's just a bit more different and interesting. It's definitely a far cry from the days of Warlords of Draenor where we were bombarded with different colors of boars while the in-game shop was just crammed full of stuff. So overall, looking pretty damn good. And from going over all of the other models, which I'm not going to talk about in specifics here because of spoilers, um, yeah, the art style looks great. Um, I think, you know, especially some of the new we got already in 735, we had like, you know, the new um, the new models for a few of the racial leaders. Seeing the new Anduin and the new Jaina, their models look absolutely amazing. So yeah, definitely there's a lot to be excited about. It's extremely early days. I don't know when we're actually going to get access to the beta, it's or alpha, whatever, to play. I'm thinking maybe next Tuesday, it could be a week after that, kind of hard to tell. But for now, there's a bit of a look at some of the new mounts. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned to the channel for lots of Battle for Azeroth content over the coming weeks and months, I suppose. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>